ruined Roman temple walls. Ooh. It's YouTube Wednesday, everybody. I'm not going to bury you guys in commentary. Instead, uh, I'm just going to pop up every now and then. The walls were based with a uh, house brown, which is basically all the different latex paints and oops paints that we have, we mix together in order to make what I call a house paint. And now I have a yellow cream color that I mixed up from some other paint that we had um, in order to do just a breakup pattern. All that's important is that you break it up. And now I have a brown spray paint. And I'm, I'm putting down some dark brown spray paint on this and your level of realism will kind of determine that color. Um, my look will not be realistic. I was wrong. I'm going to bury you in commentary. Here we go. My look isn't considered realistic, but for low light, this is very effective. The set looks really good, even in dim and low lighting. You know what it is. Sometimes a nicely detailed paint job just turns to mud in low light. And this high contrast really helps. It makes shadows, it makes depth. Uh, these walls are actually fairly 2D, so this paint job is going to give them a lot of depth. Uh, and you can see I'm using the brown spray paint to hit all the shadows and to kind of outline everything. And then where necessary, I am highlighting with that same latex paint color. These plastic columns were um, Again, just painted with the latex paint. Uh, I suspect it's going to stay on pretty well. We did some flex testing and it worked out. This flower pot I'm treating a little bit differently. Those areas of high detail, I spray painted brown. They have a sculpted detail in that area. So now that dark brown is a good base, and as I dry brush over that, it pops and highlights, whereas that would disappear before. And the spray paint makes the shadows. For the record, this soundtrack the music was solely picked because so I was looking for music that sounded like the beginning of the old HBO show Rome. That was a pretty good show and I really liked their beginning music. Uh, this is my reference material. Look at how the colors are kind of matching close to that top. I'm using the pattern up above. I'll be putting that on there shortly. Uh, let's say right now. Uh, I'm using a foam brush for this and no rulers that's why that line is crooked as heck I'm gonna blame it on the shifting sands of time maybe I meant to do that and I wanted that line to be crooked as if the wall were shifting or I just boogered it that's fine too but I'm really watching that pattern and I am kind of replicating it. This, uh, this Greek pattern is pretty common, Greek and, Greek and Roman actually. Um, and it's called a meander and it's on a lot of things that are Greek or Roman. It's a nice design feature and I thought I would add it in here. And I'm using the teal as a, as a good pop of color. And this teal color will complement my uh, vines that I do later. And this teal color is actually left over from my Castle Grayskull paint job I did in my office. I bought zero paint for this. I think it's important to note that these walls were picked as the first walls to paint for a reason. Uh, my crew is going to use this as their painting Bible for this set and refer back to it to paint the rest. But 
This is the middle, and it's kind of behind the people as they walk through. So they won't really see these walls very much. So if I screw up or mess around or try something I don't like, this is the place. And I tried a little bit of weird marbling here, and I'm not really thrilled with it. It looks okay, it works out, but I like the other side better. So I did not keep that bit of marbling. And I don't like the time that it takes and all that stuff. So we're not going to keep that. Uh, this is me just finishing out. Very short commercial. If you guys get benefit from these videos, you might consider joining our Patreon. Uh, we do a lot of fun stuff on Patreon. Um, I, we give away masks. Uh, I, I get to post thoughts of the day. Um, it's just another way to interact and to uh, hang out with you guys. We are really building a wonderful community uh, based around positivity and haunt crafting. Hope you can join us there. If your viewing device is capable of zooming in, you can get a peek at my sweet Sasquatch drawers right there. Camera. Which lines? Uh, yeah. Up. Which means... It because this sees different than our eye does, so lower light, you know. And now, this is a drastic paint job for a low light environment, mm -hmm. that's why it, it's, it's so harsh. But I could mix up a, a brown or a medium tone 50 50 with water and just mist over the whole thing uh -huh. and just bring it, calm it down, okay. you know, put it closer to a middle because as long as what you put over it has a translucency you can get it back to what you need. Okay. I did forget to record the very beginning of me putting on the vines. These are the vines I made in a tutorial. I think the one right before this. So these vines we made last week, they have that aluminum foil core that allows me to wrap them around. And here I'm showing you that I use a big fender washer and a screwdriver in uh, a screw that's what's up on top of that wall that's holding them on and down uh, this wall I've used two of the vines that I made uh, these two walls so basically it's one vine per wall panel and here I'm just showing you that you can screw it down that way and then just fold it over and that's gonna hide that screw pretty well always go back and paint those though because that shine will show up in set lights and here I'm just mixing a color to dry brush over top of the vine. This is latex paint and acrylic paint. And just a simple dry brush to make it stand out and not be black. I thought I was going to go brown, but the set has so much brown in it, uh, I wanted a greener vine. And I'm just showing you here that I'm using a one inch foam brush for this next bit. I'm going to paint in some vines. Uh, we did the 3D vines, but now I'm going to paint in some vines which are really going to help fill it out. The mix of 3D and painted vines works very well. Um, if I was just using 3D vines, I'd have to make a ton of them for it to make a difference and have this kind of an impact. And there's, there's also some issues and liability with that as far as getting caught on stuff and whatnot. Um, so by mixing the two, I get a real full lush look. Uh, and I don't have to, you know, make a ton of the other vines. But look at how full that looks. And it's just having a nice mix. Okay, so the mix of 3D and painted vines really tricks your eye into thinking that's full of vines. But it's, it's not that full of vines. It's the 3D ones tell you it's all from me, and your brain being lazy then says, oh, okay, they're all vines, got it. I start by pushing a little bit and then I just push harder and harder, and then I'm pushing hard, and I'm getting the full width of the brush. 
That's how I'm going from a real thin line to a thick line. Start at the end of the vine. And it's easier to do it from the bottom up than it is from the top down. And then I'm just gonna blend that into that mix. The color that I'm painting on for the vines is darker than the 3D vine. That's because when I add a highlight, the highlight is gonna be lighter than the 3D vine. The last step on these painted vines is to do a highlight on them. Again, I'm tricking the eye so that when you see the highlight and that darker color together, it tells you it's the same color as the 3D vine. I'm planning my colors ahead for that highlight. And that just makes them all look more 3D. This has been detailing uh, just two panels of this uh, big temple set that we're doing. And uh, I'm just really happy with how it turned out. Uh, these, this, it's always fun to paint sets. Um, a lot of the times with my director job, I'm stuck in the office designing, which is lovely. But being able to get in here and doing the uh, kind of the, the art master or the Bible for this room um, is, is really fun. And I, I, I love getting to, to play in the show for sure. And I think this is going to be a great set. Uh, if, if the rest of it comes out this good, I cannot wait to see this lit by Jake Farmer. Um, I want to see the lighting that he does. There's still a ceiling that goes over this. And uh, so many more panels to paint. But thank you guys for joining us. And of course, go make stuff. Real heroes of still be Our Patreon supporters. Here's to you, Mr. Monster Mud Prop Maker. It's so freaking heavy. Crafting 100-pound reapers that take four days to dry. Why is it still squishy? A master of the craft. You can make anything. As long as it's a monk or a reaper. Knowing full well that one October rain will make them soft again. Somebody needs a blue pill. Stilt Beast really thanks you. Really, really thanks you.